Um, so, uh, I have my game running in the background, actually. I believe, yes, it is running. Okay, so I'm going to switch the screens over so you can see it. And I, I decided to go with kind of a, a gamer setup here with the with it up in the window, uh, up in the corner, uh, just so you can get more of a visualization of this of the game itself and not my face. Um, so you'll notice right off the bat there is almost nothing here. And to top it off, I'm using the character from my previous game just to simplify things because I want to get the mechanics working before I actually start uh, populating the game with art but I will show you that you can move around in this um, so now there is something s slightly different from the previous game in terms of how the uh, the person is moving the actual movement itself is exactly the same I literally copy and pasted all of the the main character um, into the new game just to get something to debug stuff with but um, the, there is actually no walls in this game. So there is no situation where the character will get to the right or the left of the screen or the top or the bottom. The character always stays in the middle, which actually makes it a little bit simpler on me, but also it kind of alludes to the fact that this will be a very large landscape. Um, so this uh, requires some more attention in terms of how I will handle different uh, situations. Um, so with um, how many things are going to, to be on the map, uh, I have to have some sort of buffer system. So in the previous game, there was a buffer system. If something wasn't on the screen, I wasn't printing it to the screen because that takes up time. But in this situation, there may be also some processes that would normally go on in the background if you are in that area, but um, I will not be uh, running those processes. I, I don't know, there, there's probably going to be some timers that need to continue perhaps if you're on a quest or something and you need to do something in a certain amount of time or if you have to wait for something to refresh then those timers will be continuing but they don't take up too much time um, in terms of collisions and checking what you could possibly uh, interact with on the screen um, that kind of stuff will not need to be run when you are not in that area um, so what what that means is um, I am I'm doing this completely object oriented. So I have built up, uh, and you may have seen from my previous video, um, if you want to go check that out for more details uh, of the actual code itself. But um, I have um, so you'll see this big white. Uh, I believe it's actually a square and not just a rectangle. Um, you'll have this big white square, and this is what I'm calling an area. Um, so this is essentially a chunk that will be loaded when you are in it. Um, so I can add a second area to the right here. I'm not going to do it on screen just because I don't want you guys sitting around while I'm um, coding. But um, so you, th I have this this rectangle on the screen that uh, I can move in and out of. Um, so this eventually is going to be the start building that you begin your journey in. Um, if you ever played my original uh, version of this game, you might know a little bit of what uh, the story is in terms of how the start building goes, but uh, I'm not going to give any uh, significant details for right now. I'm just going to show you. So um, basically what I have to do before I get into the actual gameplay is I have to set up collisions, which I am working on, but I, I was having a little bit of trouble with just the way I'm trying to set it up because um, what I want the collision engine for the buildings to also tell me is whether you're inside the building so basically um, in, in, in a normal situation if you're inside the building that's bad because the, assuming that you're not going through the door then I want there to be a, a solid wall there that you can't get through um, but then I need a separate situation for the doors so if there's going to be a door that you go through then that needs to allow you through the walls um, now there are game engines that kind of handle all of this for you but I, I kind of feel uh, more confident in how I can apply things if I build them myself so I am using Pygame as the game engine to uh, print things to the screen 
But after that, that's pretty much it. So in terms of images, that's all Pygame is handling right now. And, and also uh, the events. So when I press things on the keyboard, I want things to happen. So I'm using Pygame for that. Um, that's just something that I don't necessarily have the uh, the talent, nor am I, could I be bothered to learn um, for right now at least. Um, and I believe it's something that's not even handled in Python. It's probably handled in C or C++ and then just uh, piped to Python for my convenience. Um, so, um, yeah, so right now I have, uh, in terms of the objects that can be worked with, I have an area, which is the main large object, which is this big white rectangle uh, that you can see surrounded by tan. Um, and then I have, um, from then on, I have objects, interactables, um, and then I just recently added walls and doors as objects. I was, I was just going to kind of work them into the rooms, but I decided that it might be nice for the walls to kind of handle their own stuff and then um, and the doors to to interact with the walls so that they can uh, the door just needs to know where it is as opposed to the wall knowing that there's a bunch of doors on it um, so what's cool about the way I'm doing it is I can keep track of a lot more um, than what I would originally do or at least it's a lot more organized um, so I can uh, what I can do is I can have a, a door and that door can uh, remember what rooms it goes in between so if it goes from outside to room zero then that's an important idea because then I need to stop projecting what is outside and start projecting what is inside the building um, so and specifically room zero in that case um, so this is area zero with building zero and then, um, so on in the area, there can be objects and interactables. Um, and also, I could probably throw in some walls and some doors, but I don't think that would be too important. Um, usually, there's going to be a building if there is walls and doors. Um, so, but, but that's the beauty of the object-oriented uh, side of it, is that I could throw those in, and it wouldn't necessarily mess things up or require a lot more coding. Um, so... Then uh, there can be buildings inside the areas, and the buildings themselves are like smaller areas. So there's initially a wall you can't get through, but if you go through one of the doors, then you enter a room, which I should correct myself, the rooms are much more like smaller areas. Um, so the room could have um, a bunch of objects, interactables, and doors, uh, it has walls as well, um, so the walls don't allow you to get out unless you go through a door. Uh, but let's say for some reason there were four rooms in here. Um, the way I'm planning to do this is to not project all four of those rooms at once. Uh, I'm only going to show you the room that you're in. So if you were in this up, uh, upper left quadrant and that was one room, um, and then there's a door over here, you could move through that and as you pass through the door, the visualization of what what area you have to move around in would switch from this left quadrant to this right quadrant. Um, so that's kind of the idea I'm going for. Um, there may be some situations where I need to show you two rooms at once, but perhaps I could just consider those as um, the same room and then just make walls um, around them in accordance to that with doors so that you can't necessarily get from one to the other. I think that might be interesting for some story things um, or just for some random stuff. If you like walked into a room and then saw something happening across the street, that might be interesting. Um, so there, there are ways to work around that because I can just consider them the same room, just spread it out. And it, it has uh, its way of, of working things out. Um, I am planning to make a shorter character when I do do the art for this. I said do do. Um, perhaps something that is about half the height of this uh, soccer mom lady right now um, just because I don't necessarily want to deal with um, it, it will save a lot of time if I only have to deal with one pixel being over the border for it to be a, con a collision um, in the current situation there's kind of like a aura around the person 
that um, is like where that person would collide with something. And like when you walk up here, there's no verticality out of the wall because we have this weird three like flattened three quarters view. Um, so if if I want that to be um, workable, then perhaps I could do something on the art side um, with the uh, the drawing. I could just make it so that you um, you see walls at a flattened three quarter view, uh, but that's it's something I'm messing around with. So I, I don't know how that's gonna play out, but we'll see when it comes around to it. And the beauty of this is that. Uh, the building itself isn't just on this white square that I'm projecting to the screen. It's its own thing. So I could change its shape. I could change its anything. And um, and it wouldn't necessarily mess up anything around it, assuming that I'm not just making it gigantic and overlapping with a bunch of other things that I have printed to the screen. Um, so the next big step is collisions and doors. Um, once those are set in, I can start working on the actual objects and interactables, which will be a little bit more complex in terms of collisions, um, assuming that there are collisions with these objects and interactables. Um, but I think that will be something that will be like, I can turn that on and off. So there might be something that you can walk through, or uh, perhaps if there's an animal, I don't necessarily want it to obstruct your path if I had it moving around randomly because then technically you could get stuck in an area because an animal closed you off. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going to mess around with stuff. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the fact that um, th I was having a, a problem earlier where not, it, it was recognizing and printing to the screen with the correct orientation, but then um, its recognition of what area I was in um, was shifted so this was the corner up here of the white rectangle in terms of what was going on on the back end and that's really annoying because it wasn't the visual thing that was messed up it was something else and I ended up fixing it but it it can get aggravating sometimes um, so that's pretty much all I've done so far uh, it's hard to show a lot of what I've done when most of it's been on the skeleton side but the cool thing about object-oriented programming is once I get all the skeletons set up, the speed at which I can output new material will be significantly larger. Uh, much like how a lot of people use game engines because a lot of the coding has already been done, I'm essentially setting up my own engine just with Pygame as the platform um, for that game engine. So. Um, that's pretty much all I have to talk about my game. I don't want to drag on too much, uh, but I hope you guys are excited. And uh, I am planning to try and get something out as soon as it doesn't look as bad as this. Um, so, like I said, I'm trying to get a lot of the, the back-end stuff going, so I can't work too much on the visual stuff. But I want to... I, I have the Itch.io page up, so if you go check that out, um, you can get a little bit more detail and um, and just keep an eye on it for when I post the first thing. I'm, I'm sure I'll post on Facebook about it when I when I upload the first update to it. Um, but I guess from here on I'm just gonna go to my random drawing. So I'm going to switch the screens over and we'll get paint going. <laughs> 